Ever wanted a home sim cockpit? Today we're looking at Winwing's main instrument panel with their upfront controller, HUD panel and MFD displays. As always, full disclosure, Winwing gave me the hardware for free for review. Professionally packed, the hardware is easy to assemble with included tools, clearly labeled connection points with wire clips and improved manual over previous Winwing offerings. Constructed of plastic, it feels solid and well built. Starting with the MFD frames, the design based on the MPCD found in a Hornet cockpit and larger than Thrustmaster's F16 frames, they use a single USB, however it connects out the back, making attachment to a standard monitor impossible unlike Thrustmaster's offerings. However, Winwing sell their own dedicated display as an extra. They'll sit tabletop at one of two angles, using sticky pads, not my favourite solution, but effective. Or you can desk mount them on the edge with the extra kit. Angle adjustable, these simply clamp onto your desk with no fuss and have a protective pad on one side. You can have them either way up, myself I prefer to have the screw above to reduce the extension below and to make it easier to remove. The buttons are soft and rubbery with a membrane action without a click as you would expect. But the dividers hold extra buttons, helping it handle larger MFDs like the Apache, although it's still not a perfect solution, it will let you align controls to the screen much better, but it lacks a full complement of buttons to fully realise the extra functions without some creative binding. On the side there's a modifier switch. Using Simap Pro, it can emulate three separate physical MFD controllers allowing full control from a single panel, this is great for those of you on a budget. Sadly, if you're running a Display Export 2, it cannot switch to match, owing to a DCS limitation. On top, the brightness control dial is a rotary encoder with push rather than an axis, although you can set it to be a virtual axis in the software should you prefer. The push makes it great for systems like the Abris in addition to its intended brightness control. Each panel can synchronise its own backlighting with DCS's own or with manual control within Simap Pro. You might notice that all three are MPCDs rather than a set of two DDIs and a single MPCD. Whilst this will upset the purists, it does make the panel much more compatible with other aircraft, of which it'll work great with everything in DCS, bar the JF-17 which uses a different aspect ratio. Although some modules do have their own quirks for exporting their display which you'll have to work around. And to get the most out of the frames, you are going to want those displays. They are portrait 60Hz, 768 by 1024 resolution with good colours, viewing angles and crisp picture. However, they do have a glossy finish, making it prone to finger marks and, rather unfortunately, glare. Whilst this was never an issue for me, bright environments may have some trouble. They also lack brightness and contrast controls. A single USB free connector provides both power and display, requiring third party drivers. They function like normal monitors within Windows, not needing Simap Pro, which lets you put in whatever you like on them. Drawback being, whilst yes, you can play Doom on it, the dead zone hidden above by the frame will obscure icons and windows, making it generally difficult to interact with within Windows. The usable area allows for a display export size of 768 by 768 Now Simap Pro has a tool to assist in automatically setting up your monitor config for DCS export. Unfortunately, this didn't work for me. It should look something like this, allowing you to configure and generate the script for export automatically. Myself, tired of troubleshooting and familiar with doing this myself manually, I did so. TCS uses a script file to define your game and export windows, which is a topic deserving of its own video, but suffice to say this takes a little trial and error to get right. Hopefully this will be fixed by the time you get your hands on your own set. You can also export Falcon BMS onto them if you wish, being a simple process with the right tools, just remember to enable the greater than 32 button inputs within the BMS config file or enable the 32 button mode within Simap Pro. Any game that supports desktop placement of exports will of course work just fine with these displays. Together they make managing the on-screen controls and on-the-fly adjustments to your picture very convenient. The centerpiece of the set, the upfront controller and attached HUD panel sits proud on its desk mount. The HUD panel connects via a SATA cable combining with the UFC not with USB, so it only functions in addition to the UFC. All in all, you need seven USB free sockets, so I'd recommend an externally powered USB hub to ensure smooth operation. In combination with the centre display, you're going to lose the ability to adjust the angle, locking it as found in the Hornet's cockpit. The dimensions of the full set match up with the real thing, or at least the virtual one in DCS, physically and digitally aligning very nicely, with the exception of the DDIs, which I find are slightly too low. Using within VR, it can be a little tricky, favouring peeking through the nose gap as it's not easy to navigate by touch. And the centre console is wide enough that if you're using a narrow rudder pedal set like CH or Thrustmaster's budget option, it would intrude just a little bit on your legs. 
The UFC uses the same light sync but also working display which is incredibly handy, allowing you to look directly at the unit without needing to check your screen for confirmation. Now no fault to WinWing, but to get the most out of the UFC you really do need to have the full set as a lot of the UFC functions are tied to the MFD inputs on the Hornet. Together this makes data entry a cinch, dramatically increasing your productivity within the cockpit systems. It's very natural to manipulate, making everyday tasks just that bit much more easy. Being a core cool part of the jet, you're going to find yourself frequently using the panels and they do offer a lot more to your setup than a typical button panel will for lesser used functions. I feel this makes it an excellent upgrade after a HOTAS and pedals for those looking for a full immersion. On the top of the unit we've got three extra rocker buttons, these work well with other modules like the F16 or A10 to cover missing controls, making it more flexible. Sadly there's no dedicated master caution button, modes or arm, which would have been greatly appreciated, along with the HMD brightness control or jettison. Surprisingly the whole kit lacks a way to support your joystick at the bottom, it's compatible with standard aluminium track mounts however, as demonstrated by Winwing here but they don't offer an official kit at the moment, so plan accordingly as a synth mount is certainly preferable unless you have a force sensing joystick. Overall I've no serious complaints, quality is as you'd expect without major issues, design is largely well thought out, and the sheer functionality of having the full set adds a lot to your flight sim experience, both physically and practically. It's large, requiring some effort to remove or set up, so you're probably going to want to consider a proper sim rig or permanent arrangement. I've thoroughly enjoyed using the kit and it does have a meaningful impact on your gameplay making laborious tasks easier, a more useful expansion than a simple switch panel being part of the core controls, saving you reaching for your mouse quite frequently. The Franken panel mixture that is the combat and takeoff sets do pair nicely alongside but of course they don't truly fit in as they're not a real replica. The whole set is fairly pricey and don't forget to account for shipping and any import duties that apply to you, but it is a really fun addition to your sim that I would recommend if you have the space. I hope you've enjoyed, and take care.